this chapter, we're going to talk about adding a new campaign. We spoke about campaign hierarchy. We understand that an account includes campaigns, ad groups, and keywords, and settings. Campaigns include ad groups. Ad groups contain ads and keywords. We initially decided that our overall campaign structure should be um, based on, on a top level item topic um, and product category from our website, poppin.com, because if you remember, we're advertising, we're creating an ad campaign for Poppin Office Furniture. And we started off creating this first campaign over here uh, called Poppin USA Furniture. USA was, was an identifier to say that we're going to be showing our ads in the US only, and furniture was to um, signify that this is going to include all product categories from the furniture section of Poppin. So let's just jump over to the Poppin website, take a look at that again. Here's the home page. And if we go to furniture, we see all these um, different uh, sub sub product categories under furniture. And we had began um, building out a campaign for, if you remember, desk chairs. Now, if you go back to our campaign, you look at our structure, we have all these ad groups for all different types of desk chairs. We have the armless, colorful, conference desk chairs, cute, ergonomic. And we noticed as we started building this campaign that there really were a lot of different ad groups that we could just target for desk chairs. So this is a great example of, of the dynamic nature of building a campaign and how sometimes your account structure changes and your strategy changes how you want to structure that account. And what I'm thinking now is to create a separate campaign for all the other office furniture subcategories. So I want to have a separate campaign. Let's say we'll you know start with file cabinets next. Okay, file cabinets have a whole bunch of different subcategories like uh, three drawer, two drawer, sliding door, rolling, fully loaded, and then there's also accessories for file file cabinets. So there's a lot of different um, there's a lot of different keywords and ad groups that we could segment things out by um, for file cabinets itself, and it might get too confusing to add all the file cabinet ad groups into our overall furniture campaign. Um, and we also want to not just add one ad group for all file cabinets, because remember, the more ad groups you have by product category, the more specific you could talk to your customer. So if somebody goes to Google and searches for three drawer file cabinet, I'd love to have an ad that talks about three drawer file cabinets, and I'd love to send them to this page that sells the three drawer file cabinets. Same thing if somebody types in a rolling, you know, rolling file cabinets for sale, I'd love to send them I, I want my ad to talk about wheels and rolling and, and the product characteristics that they were searching for and send them to this specific page, um, poppin.com forward slash furniture forward slash rolling. So that's really what I want to do. Um, because there's a lot of ad groups just under file cabinets itself, I would like to add a new campaign that's just targeting um, file cabinets. But that also means that I need to rename this campaign to not just be talking about furniture. I need to identify this campaign. So how do we change the name of a campaign? There's two ways we could do it. Um, one of them is to simply navigate to the All Campaigns area by clicking on this upper left-hand um, item called All Campaigns. It's always there in your dashboard as long as you have your left-hand menu panel open. And go to the Campaigns tab. You'll see all your campaigns. So I could simply click the upper right hand corner of this little box when I hover over in the campaign name um, and just click the pencil icon and I could edit the name of my campaign. Okay, I could similarly edit the name of my campaign by clicking into the campaign where they drop me onto the ad groups tab and I could hover over the name on the top of the screen here and edit the name here. I like changing campaign names here because it gives me a little bit more room to work with in terms of visibility. So I'll keep this called furniture and we'll just name it furniture chairs. Okay, so that's kind of following or maybe we can call it desk chairs, but we could definitely follow how it looks here. So desk chairs um, on poppin.com. If we see over here, it's called uh, desk chairs. So we want to, it would be great just to name our campaigns in the naming conventions that mimic the, the website itself. So I'll go over here and just name this desk chairs and click save. So now I know that this campaign is specifically talking about desk chairs. And now I'm in good shape to go ahead and add my new campaign. So how do I add a new campaign? Well, I go back to my all campaigns list and I have this big red button plus campaign. This plus campaign button is exactly where I'm going to start creating a new campaign. So I'm going to go ahead and click on plus campaign and right away I'm presented with a whole bunch of different options. But don't be overwhelmed. 
There's just one option that you need to know for Google search ads. Google search ads are the most profitable and they're the most common and the most successful form of advertising. So you wanna go ahead and just click search network only. Google search and search partners, search network only. That's the only type of campaign that we're gonna be running when we talk about Google search ads. When we wanna run display ads, we would add a new display network campaign, shopping video, um, promoting your app. There are different types of campaigns you could run in AdWords, but for our purposes and for 99% of advertisers, we wanna be primarily focusing on just search network only, which means when somebody goes to google.com or somebody, if we select search partners, somebody goes to, you know, um, AOL.com and does a search for a product or service, those are the um, web properties that we want to have our ads displayed. So just go ahead and click search network only. And if you um, see what we have here, it's very, very similar to the initial screen we saw. It's a little different, um, but it's not all that different where this should be completely um, foreign to you. A few things that we need to reiterate and remember how we're going to um, structure this campaign. We always want to click all features. All features gives us um, greater flexibility in the different settings and the different um, targeting parameters that we could control. Okay, so we're not looking for mobile app installs. We're not trying to drive mobile app engagement. Uh, we're not running a call only campaign. These are different features for different types of advertisers. We just simply want to stick with all features. Okay, now I'm going to name this campaign Pop in, let's see, call it, you know, we'll just, it's only targeting the USA. And our top level category is furniture. And we're gonna be targeting file cabinets. So this will be a file cabinets campaign. Now we have our name. Don't worry, obviously, as we just saw, you could always change the name of your campaign later. That's not a big deal. We could load settings from existing campaigns. I mean, I could choose an existing campaign to take the settings, which would take the schedule, it would take the automated, it would take the bids, it would take the budget, but we're not gonna do that. Um, we're gonna just create new settings from scratch. Under the networks area, we're presented with an option um, to include the search partners or to exclude search partners. This is a, a setting which has no best practice or rule. If your customers are using AOL and your customers are using um, you know, ask.com, a whole bunch of the different potential search partners of Google, Google does not disclose who all their search network partners are, um, then that would be potentially a good idea. But like, once again, I think we, we, we discussed this already, if your budget is not extremely high and you're just starting off, I would highly recommend just including Google search network and excluding search partners. You know, um, that's really the only thing you you should you should be spending your money on because Google the Google search network usually brings the best traffic and the highest quality visitors okay devices ads will show on all eligible devices by default there's nothing that you could change now but once again we'll go ahead and take a look at setting up bid adjustments in a later chapter here we have the same locations area as we had before so I'm going to choose just the United States once again, I can go over into this advanced search box and exclude or include any specific countries outside the US. Um, so I could, let's say, I want to exclude, um, if I wanted to include everywhere in the US, except for Texas, I would first have to include the United States by adding, starting to type the United States, adding that country. And then I could exclude, exclude let's say, Texas, for example. So now I would be targeting the US, targeted locations, and excluding Texas as a location. So that's something I could do. Um, let's just remove that, and we could just include the US. I have some more advanced location options if I twirl this down over here. And we always wanna search people in my target, not always, but in most cases, we wanna select people in my targeted location. Um, and people in searching for show interest in my excluded location, leave that selected over here. Basically what that means is if, if I'm excluding Texas and somebody does, somebody does a search, let's say from New York, for file cabinets in Texas or file cabinets in Dallas, then um, my ad will not show because that's indicating somebody's looking for you know file cabinets in Texas. If I just selected people in my excluded location, then if somebody's in New York and somebody types into Google um, file cabinets in Texas, then my ad would be eligible to show as long as it matched a keyword. But I'm just gonna leave the, the recommended default setting for the exclude parameter. I wanna only be targeting English properties and English speaking people. So I'll leave that as it is. 
And of course, our we will want to set our we will want to manually set my bid for clicks over here. I'm going to put in a default bid once again because we don't have any data yet. We're going to be using a basic bid. We could you know make that bid two dollars and twenty five cents for now, um, and we'll put this at a uh, fifty dollar daily budget. Google says it gives you a little warning here that actual daily spend may vary. That's because your budget might not be depleted, right? You might only spend $40 throughout the day. If my keyword level bids are too low, for example, or if there's simply too little volume for the keywords that are in this campaign or in these ad groups, um, I might not even spend my $40 a day. Alternatively, I might spend a little bit more than $50 a day. You should be prepared to, to spend 10 to 20% above your budget. And that's because Google calculates how much you're spending, but by the time your ads get shut off, there's sometimes a little bit of a delay and you might have accrued a couple clicks in that time frame. So even if you put a $50 a day budget, it's very common to spend $54, $55, $58. Um, that's totally normal and totally um, accepted. In our delivery method advanced, um, we want to go to accelerated. We want um, to spend our budget more quickly because I want to see how much volume is out there and I'd like to um, see how much potential reach I could have. So I'm happy to check, you know, choose accelerated for now to get a sense of what's happening. Um, over here we have ad extensions. We could start creating some ad extensions. Um, we will go ahead and create a call extension right now and we'll go back and create site link extensions um, in a later chapter. Uh, call extensions are good because, you know, for our company, let's say, uh, we want people calling in because we take orders over the phone. And I'm just making that up. I don't know for sure if Poppin does take orders over the phone. But listen, they may and your business may. So a call extension is a really powerful um, type of ad extension. And what it does is it, it adds your phone number either after the headline or below the headline of the actual ad. So it gives you more real estate on the screen. It also gives users a chance to call you without even clicking an ad. And that's a really cool um, potential option. So if we hit call extension and we select this, we'll have the option to now create or add a previous call extension. So we have this call extension here, this number. I'm going to select it by clicking this arrow. Now it's selected. Um, and I'm going to um, I'm going to click save. I'm going to, you know, I don't actually I don't even need to click save because um, I can just click out of this box. But what I want to do is show you what this edit menu looks like over here. I have the ability to show this extension on just mobile devices, desktop, desktop and tablets only, or all devices. So I'm gonna choose to click um, only mobile devices because that's the, uh, I, I feel, or my research has shown me that that the mobile users um, will generally call in, they'll sometimes have a, a they'll, I, I, I wanna persuade my mobile users to call and not to click through onto the website because sometimes the connections are slow on, on, on mobile phones, sometimes the web browsing interface is not as smooth as a desktop, so I want to encourage as much as I can my mobile users to call. So I'll choose to have this call only extension just on mobile devices and my desktop visitors, I want them to go to the website because the buying process is so smooth and I'd rather not have sales agents or sales representatives be on the phone um, with customers who are likely to check out online anyway. So I have this um, phone number selected. If I can go into this menu over here on the right hand side, the edit menu, and I could choose um, a few different options here. I could choose that, um, I could choose the type of phone number this is. So this is a US number. And I want to select a Google forwarding phone number. In most cases, this is a very good um, and smart way of setting up this call extension. What this does is, let's say this number here, 201-876-9876, that's my actual phone number. A Google forwarding number will display a separate number. It'll be a totally different number from a pool of, of obviously millions of numbers. And that number, if somebody calls it, will forward to, um, it'll forward to our office number. And what that allows us to do is to track phone call conversions. That way we'll see how many ads led to phone calls, how many phone calls came from ads because Google sees a specific number that they know they placed by my ad. And if you call that number, it'll route that call to your main number that you select here, but Google will track it as a, um, as a actual phone call conversion. I could check, I could deselect that by hitting my own phone number. Do not create a forwarding number. Sometimes companies have a lot of uh, brand recognition around their phone number, so they don't they don't need a Google forwarding number. Um, but mo in most cases, it's a really smart thing to use. Show my ad with a Google forwarding number. Under the advanced menu, I could I could select start and end date for this extension to be visible. 
I can create a custom schedule for it. And over here, by default, it's selected report phone call conversions, count calls as phone call conversions. Um, and the conversion action is set to calls from ads. This is something which is set by default and I would just leave it um, as is and then I click save.